I will be honest with you, I was very surprised to see Rocco on a Mexican OT song. And then I heard the beat and I'm like, oh this makes yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> this makes, makes a sense. lot of sense. What's your relationship with Icy Twat? I made that animation and Twat put in the Discord, like, yo, who made this? Send him my way. I hit up Twat and he was like, I need more. I like, I, like make me some more stuff. How dope is it that Bluegrass got onto the 2K soundtrack? Like. Welcome back, everybody, to the Soul Serum Podcast. I am your, I told my T.O., let that mug blow, host Clay Bonin, and we are back on the podcast. I'm so excited. I'm very sorry for the absence, everybody, but we are back, and I'm going to skip all the bullshit. Let's just get right into it, because today on the show, we're back in our interview bag, and we have a great guest. Our guest has produced music for people like That Mexican OT, Big Baby Gucci, Icy Twat, E The Prophet, and Ice JJ Fish. He recently has been expressing himself with visualizers and music videos that remind me of those good old PS2 days. And perhaps most importantly, he's now joined the very prestigious group of a two-time Soul Serum interview. Today on the show, we have Rocco Roy. Can we get a, a clap from the studio audience? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm so happy to have you back. How how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. I really can't complain. Got up around, uh, what was it, 10 o'clock maybe? Starting the day a little bit later than usual. But it's okay. It's the weekend. It's the weekend, I, you know. It's the weekend. We can, yeah. we can sleep in a that's little bit. Saying. It's the yeah, that's weekend. I deserve man. it. I deserve it. So it has been over three years since our first interview, which is insane. When I went back and looked at it, I was like, holy shit, dude. Yep. Like, it was like November of 2020. Yep. Um, I loved going back and watching that interview. It felt very pure. It felt like, because it yeah. was like so early on in the podcast that like, I didn't even have my like flow and in my intro and Man, everything. Yeah, yet. yeah I, I hear you. I think you killed it though. I'm gonna be honest, if it was, it was like the childhood years almost. It was like the, you know. Dude, of, we all kind of look like babies a little bit. No, we do. It, you we know, do. like, so I, I'm I'm happy to have you back. Um, but just, you know, first and foremost, how you doing right now? How's life treating you right now? Uh, it's fast. It's it's definitely, I've made a lot of changes, a little pivots mm -hmm. here and there over the past couple months um, with the Mexican OT song coming out mm -hmm. or came out what was that January 9th or something yeah just in the past month a lot has transpired a lot of work has came my way since yeah. then I mean I felt busy beforehand but now I feel like I really have to prioritize how I use my time yeah and yeah just a lot's been going on with that and juggling that juggling the music and the production with the video editing kind of like making yeah. you know visualizers for all different types of artists like it's it's a lot, but it's kind of exactly what I've always wanted. So right, it's, right. You know, it's perfect. Sometimes like that fast, busy life is good. Yeah. You know, you yeah. don't really expect it, but then it happens, and you're like, all right, dude, now yeah. I got to pivot. The world's only gonna give you what you can handle. You know? Right. So right. That's kind of how I look at it. It's like I feel like I'm able to juggle this. So keep you know keep throwing more balls into the equation and try yeah, to make it work for sure. Know? So well, let's let's get right into it. 20299. What do you are we calling it? 020299. What's the proper title of this song? I call it 020299. 020299 yeah. by that Mexican OT. I, I will be honest with you, I was very surprised to see Rocco on a Mexican OT song, and then I heard the beat, and I'm like, oh this makes yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> this makes, makes a sense. lot of sense. And it's actually dope. Like one of my coworkers who isn't really like super into hip hop, he likes that Mexican OT. Mm -hmm. And independently was like, dude, the beat of that song just makes me feel like I'm in a dark room, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I was like, yeah. well, actually, yeah, <laughs> actually, I know the guy who did it. But yeah, um, yeah. but that's so dope. Like, I'm so I was so hyped to see that number 88 on the Hot 100 on Billboard. Mm -hmm. um, just tell me tell me the backstory as to how that even came to be. Man. Uh, well, so I had done Icy Twats. I did like a I think it was like three or four songs on the Icy Twats project. Mm -hmm. um, Final Boss. And Mexican OT's producer had hit me up and was like, yo, you know, I had um, downloaded a, a, all your like sound kits on YouTube because that's like a big thing that I do is I, yeah. I try to update my YouTube all the time. And, you know, 
still provide beats to absolutely anybody and you know, mm-hmm. whoever wants them. Uh, so I put a lot of my beat catalog on there. But yeah, he was like, hey, like, I love your sounds. Like, if you have anything that you would want to send me, you know, let me know. And so I was like, okay, what's, like what's his name? DJ Skells. Uh, DJ Skells. Yeah, yes. shout out Skells. Yes. Skells shout is out. the man. He super cool dude. We locked in. We talk every once in a while. Not even every once in a while. It's quite frequently. But mm-hmm. um, we're, we're both just big fans of each other's work. And after kind of like learning about who he was, because I, I knew Mexican OT. I had right. uh, everyone kind of had seen, you know, the clips about him. He's just consistently growing and, mm-hmm. and leveling up. And um, a legitimately talented rapper. Oh, yeah. So. He's amazing. I mean, his his word flow is, is insane. Yeah. And I feel like his style very much matched up and kind of paired with the stuff that I have been growing towards and, you know, making so it kind of just like matched very well so i was like yeah like you know i can send you uh some some loops some samples whatnot Mm. and i had sent i mean it was probably one of the first three loops i sent him and he sent it back and was like yeah we got one like you know we got one he sent it to me and i remember listening to in the car and i'm like i really like this song yeah i'm just you know as a producer when you get that 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 demo that rough draft you're always kind of like this is this is tough, but like, is it gonna drop? Like, that's right. always the big question. It's like, is it gonna drop? Is the label gonna let it drop? When is it gonna drop? Is it gonna be six months? Is it gonna be next week? Is it gonna be whenever? And so I really felt like, you know, I didn't really have the expectations for it. I was just like, you okay, I'm gonna purposefully go. kind of were like, you know, this is cool, but I'm not gonna get too. I'm not gonna get my hopes up. Yeah, up. and I had, you know, I had told a couple people like, you know, yeah, I got this one song that's dropping, and we got, I'm pretty sure we got a couple, but I'm not really sure if those will ever. Mm-hmm. But. I had yeah, so he sent the song back. I didn't have expectations. And How quick did he send it back? Oh man, it might have been, it might have been a week. Okay. If that I just but they they're busy individuals. He was on tour at the moment, or at least doing a lot of shows. Yeah. And he was bouncing around, so I didn't have like I said, I wasn't really. I was like he he's got this this plan in motion already. I hadn't heard nothing about an album, mm-hmm. nothing like that. He had dropped an album, maybe. It was like the Johnny Dang album, right? You know, the album, right. the Johnny Dang song, yeah. On and so i was like you know maybe it is like due for an album you know or something like that which i'm pretty sure is what's in the works right now or possibly going to drop but yeah i it ended up getting that that demo back in a week and then i want to say two to maybe i would say a month so it's like the beginning of december mm-hmm. um got contacted by by his label and they're like yeah we're planning on dropping this and like you know we just need confirmation that you know these are the people who are on the song yep x y and z went through all the the there's really not a whole lot of credits on that song, which I which yeah. I thought was dope. It's like Just us Mexican OT, Scales, and you. Yeah. Which I know, like, I'm sure as you've had experience with that, like, so, uh, that's a lot of, like, the label bullshit when a song comes out. It's like, oh my well, who's on this? Is this a sample? Who wrote yeah. this? Who did it? Like, nah, there was some paperwork that I definitely had to do that I haven't had to do before. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's just whether the other labels that I had, you know, done songs with or, you know, worked with, if they just weren't really interested in it or yeah. if they were thinking that maybe it wasn't i don't know there's there there was a lot of like hoops we had to jump through first and um yeah it i just was like yeah we're we're cool like everything on my behalf is safe to use which yep. is kind of sometimes uh, as a producer you got to be careful cuz you mm-hmm. know if you want to throw a sample in there or something like that you know then which, that's a whole other set of loops that you got to fucking set, jump through. Yeah, and, you know, some people just turn a blind eye, but I was like, you know, we got to make sure that this one's completely um, safe to use. You yeah. know, and, and luckily it was, like, it would, that was made from scratch on my yeah. behalf and same with scale, so it was just organic and it happened so... That's rad. Yeah. And, I, lo- I like, to me, that does seem, of course, like, I don't know what his whole plan is, but, like, so he has that song and he just dropped a song, like, a week ago or something with the baby. So yep. this feels like singles to lead to like a, a yep. bigger project project so it's kind of tight that you maybe got the lead single for uh yeah for and that's the next mexican ot project i think it's at 74 right now on billboard and it's still growing that's that's so I'm hoping amazing we can, hoping we can make it yeah a little bit higher see and what happens has that you mentioned it a little bit earlier but that's kind of led to some other connections and some other business perhaps yeah yeah i mean i think it's brought a spotlight over to to my work and has allowed even things that aren't even remotely close to you know mexican ot's music and whatnot yeah but when people see that and they're kind of like oh wait hold up and they start connecting dots and it's like oh he does visualizers as well oh he does mm-hmm. this as well oh, okay so it kind of got to a point where 
And it's at, it's at this point where people see that and that's just kind of brought, like I said, a spotlight to yeah. my work. So That's cool though, because like, well, to, to to add on to the thing where it's like, it's only three names on these song yeah. credits. That means like they can go, they're like, okay, that's that Mexican OT. Yeah. That's his producer, DJ Scales. And like, who's this third guy? Yeah. Like yeah, there was exactly. obviously exactly. he had a lot to do with this if he's one of the only three people yeah. on it. So that's super nice. Cause sometimes you read song credits mm. and like, if it's 17 people on it, it's like, well, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but no, like, I mean, you know, you if have, there's 17 people you know, on it, it's like, well, who? Who really did? Yeah, six writers, some of this, you know, six you know? writers, four or five producers. Yeah. You, know, you got the main artist, and then sometimes, you know, the, the management will step in and they have like an executive producer kind right, of thing, or, right. you know, whatever. And so, yeah, you end up having splits with, with you know, 10, 12 people. And it's like, ah, oh, but this one was very much just cutting a third. And, yeah. Know, so that's beautiful, though. It was. It was, uh, like I said, it was very organic and it happened just so off the whim and then end up becoming like a moment so that's amazing i want to i want to keep talking about some of your other recent work too um shout out to 17 year old rocco i and i quote i hope one day icy twat can hear my work i've made for him dot 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 wow, well it's yeah. it sounds and that was 2017 yeah is when you said that um Tell me a little bit about that. You've done a lot of stuff for Icy Twat recently. That's, like that's I know you've done a lot of production work for him, but I feel like the last project of the last two projects, you've been doing so much of the visual aspect of yeah. it too. So let's just start off. Like, what's your relationship with Icy Twat? So um, to start it off, I'd say like you know you brought up the tweet. Uh, 2016, I want to say I had a buddy of mine from high school. Who was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like the the talk remix, you yeah, know? and yeah. was like, hey, like you should check this out. I listened to it and I fell in love with the the ambient, melodic, you know, yeah, the seventh chords. Like yeah. it just it was so beautiful to me, and it very reminded me of like, I right before I was listening to a lot of like golf, you know, from mm -hmm. Tyler, mm -hmm. and I had always mm -hmm. been a Tyler fan, and Twat is very heavily influenced by Tyler, and he'll say that himself, yeah. And, I could just, that's interesting. I, that's yeah. interesting. That it, it, actually kind of makes sense. Like he's like you would never listen to it directly and be like, "This sounds like Tyler yeah, the Creator." Yeah. But now that you say that, I yeah. can kind of see how some of that like atmospheric sort of environmental sounds are inspired by right. Tyler. No, and if you go back to like the Dream Boy tape, or mm -hmm. if you go back to to the Milk tape that that twat had dropped i don't know what exactly years those were mm. but if you were to go back and look at those you can hear in the chord progressions that they're they're influenced and you kind of get right. some sort of element from that from from tyler's work and uh yeah so i was becoming a fan of ice twat and i felt like man like the, i just saw so much uh just I don't know, like he had so much leverage on other artists because of his originality. So I right. felt like, okay, this is something that I'm, I kind of, I bought into it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I bought into, you know, his wave and I was like, man, I, like I want to help push this in whatever way I can kind of thing. And so for a while I had even made a lot of, you know, Icy Twat-esque beats that were mm -hmm. just like, you know, very, very similar to his older stuff. And I sent those out to a lot of artists and I just, I was like, this is going to catch, like this is going to catch, this is going to catch. And it did, like, if you know, you know, kind of thing. And years went by. I tweeted that, you know, like, man, I just, because I, I was always looking for an email. Always looking for yes, an email. Yeah. And one day, I want to say this is maybe 2020, like early 2022, he had posted, and it was around this time last, or two years ago. Mm -hmm. I had, he posted like a, a screenshot of his email. And I was like, you know, screenshot yep, it, it. Went to my computer, loaded it up and sent him a pack and i want to say maybe three months later it might have been like may i want to say or maybe a little bit earlier than that um he was like yo like i these two right here he had sent me like the beats that i had sent back and was like i really like these like send more like this and i was like okay like it's we're in there we're in there we got yep. this and so i kept making beats kept making beats sending them to him and uh I really don't know how it all started with the visualizers. Yeah. But that was like also the end as well was because I had loved the aesthetic of what he was going for. Mm -hmm. And it very much reminded me of nostalgia. And like, yeah, that's a yeah. big thing that's, you know, 
influences my work as nostalgia. So I feel For like, sure. okay, if I were to, I knew how to edit videos in a way already. I knew that. Yeah, I you could had do it. for just for clarification, you've been making visualizers yeah. and like videos for before it. you and I see twat linked right. up. Right, and I, I used to make YouTube videos when I was a kid, so I knew how to work programs and whatnot. Yeah. I knew how to, you know, it's. I mean, it's it's a task, or I wouldn't say a task, but it's like a, it's a skill. Yes, that learning how to just simply put something together visually. Yes. You know, and and work the doll, the program, whatever. I used to use like Sony Vegas, but you know, now I'm using Premiere and After Effects. Shout out to anybody who's had a cracked <laughs> version of Sony, Sony Vegas. Vegas. I swear. I'm with you. I'm with you there. It's real. Like, you know, I was working on the PC and then, you know, now that I got the the MacBook, I was like, okay, I want to make something for myself. So I was making videos for myself. Yeah. And I had connected with um this dude named Zoe. Shout out Zoe. He was making visualizers and I was like, yo, like, you know, so I made a little walking animation for Twat and very basic. In my opinion, it's not like something I'm extremely proud of, but I'm proud of it because it did create opportunities. Mm -hmm. But I made that animation and Twat put in the discord like, yo, who made this? Send him my way. I hit up Twat and he was like, I need more. I like, I, like make me some more stuff. And he posted it. I got a whole bunch of love from and that. This is after you've already sent him beats. Yeah, too? this is after I sent him beats. And then he connect- He was like, oh, you the motherfucker. Yeah, so <laughs> then he connected it and was like, oh, you like, bro, I need beats, I need visualizers, like all this. So I was like, okay, like let's let's lock in. Like, let's That's get this going. Tight. So uh yeah. Y'all went to the locked in factory together. We did. <laughs> we did. And I, I spent I spent, oh my gosh, like weeks just in my crib, just working on the laptop, yep. trying to figure out which ways I can and I was so, the process was so slow. Like that first animation I did, I drew almost everything like by, not even by hand, like on the little, the, the trackpad on the, yeah. And it's just like, I'm sitting there trying to learn how to, you know, cause I didn't have like a scanner or nothing. I didn't really yep. have the. Like um, the little drawing tablet. Yeah, I, none I didn't of have that. none of that. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like each frame, all this stuff. And it's, it took me, I swear, 20 hours probably. And you know, Fast forward, I made another one, and then I started to realize, like, okay, if I start incorporating other elements, like, just sort of, like, if you think of, like, a early 2000s commercial, mm -hmm. you know, for, like, a, like, Claritin or some shit, it's, like, dreamy, and it's also kind of, like, a little blurry, but the colors are, like, real vibrant. Yeah. I was, like, always chasing after that, and along the way i met this dude named uh rez shout out rez resonator on instagram he's that's that's my brother he's oh my gosh he's so talented but me and him started talking we would chop it up about ideas and you know he would make his own stuff i'd make my own stuff he'd be like yeah did a you know i like this part you should change this part and he was like kind of like guiding me coaching me through things that i wasn't even like aware of i was just yeah. trying to like you know put things together and you know, I'd like a little make a little mistake here and there, or whatnot. And he'd be like, "Yo, change this, whatnot." And uh, yeah, ended up he started giving all these visualizers to Twat. Yeah, and he was posting every single one that I was making. I'd be like, "Well, this one's not done yet," but he would post it anyways. <laughs> yeah, and another thing too, Twat is real in the moment. Twat's well, yeah, in the moment, but also Twat will get on your ass about some. And that's what I love about him because he does apply the pressure. Like he. Yeah. And he'd be like, I need it in three hours. And I'm like, well, I still got eight hours left of work to do on this. <laughs> yes. You know, so yes. and like and going back, like this is kind of. And that's a hard thing to uh, like translate to a client, not just somebody that you work with a lot. Just like yeah. anytime you're working on a product for a client, it's hard to be like, yeah, I need this by such and such. And you're like. I can't like uh, yeah. just, uh, like I could get yeah. it to you by then, but it's not going to be what yeah. you want it to be. You yeah. know, that's and a constant struggle. I think going back to like my sports days, having a coach in your ear, you know, telling you like, you got to do this, you got to do that, mm -hmm. you know, 5 a.m. lifts or whatever. And it's like, you know, your body is not ready to do the work, yeah. but you got to like mentally push yourself past that. Yeah. So I kind of it, it felt like that in a way. And like, yeah. I say that with so much love and respect because it's like, you know, I loved my coaches. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Twat was kind of like, yo, like you gotta like apply the pressure and really just get after it kind of thing. And I, yeah. I, I really like that. Cause I do like when people are getting you to the next step kind of thing. And that's really what it felt like. It yeah. was like, I know that this is going to pay off, you know? And I knew that everything was for, for like a, for a reason, for man. a reason and a yeah. purpose. Yeah. So 
You're talking a lot about like being locked in, being on the laptop in the house. I'm very familiar with that through video editing, photo editing. Um, and one thing I struggle with a lot in that is like staying focused, keeping that right. energy. Right. And actually, we have a sponsor on today's podcast, Rocco, called Magic Mind. These are wellness shots. Um, shout out to Magic Mind. They reached out to us totally unprovoked just like try this out we've tried a few of them out um it's actually pretty amazing what these little things do first of all i don't know how many wellness shots you've had in your life they're usually gross they're usually yeah. disgusting these yeah. are actually delicious there's passion fruit where's the ingredients at I there's have passion fruit in here it gives that nice little citrus taste in there um and one of my favorite things about these two is like when you are sitting and editing and you hit that proverbial wall, like I, I'm very guilty of just being like, all right, fuck it, coffee. Mm -hmm. And like, that's cool for like 30 minutes. And then I usually feel pretty bad afterwards. But what's dope about these though, is like you get that, that burst of that energy, but I'm not like yeah. tweaking yeah, on my laptop. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the ingredients in here, uh, I learned something from my mom a long time ago. You can tell something is good if you can pronounce all the ingredients in it. <laughs> and there's no Drexel, Mexel, Thetelmean or anything like that in here. These are all good stuff. You got B12s, you got lion's mane mushrooms, ashkawanda, all things to help you get energized and focused. So shout out to Magic Mind. You can go to magicmind.com slash soulserum20, get 20% off, that's good forever. If you get a subscription to these guys, you can get over 50% off using our code soulserum20. Um, so anybody who needs that little afternoon kick, use our code, get you some Magic Mind. Shout out Magic Mind. Shout out Magic Mind. Me and Rocco also both had one yeah, before feel, the podcast. I feel great. I feel hey, great. We, we own the locked in yeah. factory, <laughs> okay? In, we are right locked in. Um, okay, let's talk about, I want to start, uh, one one more question before. Are you good? I have, I have like some... From our first interview, I have some cross analyzation, yeah. uh, uh, cross analysis, if you will. But I want to ask one more thing before we get into that. Um, and we actually have somebody uh, in the crowd who's related <laughs> to this here. Um, of course, like since the last podcast, you've continued your work with Either Profit. You know, mm -hmm. it's been amazing to watch. You guys have made so many songs together, damn near whole tapes together. Shout, shout out, out, ETP. shout, shout out, out ETP. ETP. Um, I could ask a lot of things about that, but really I want to know, like, how dope is it that Bluegrass got onto the 2K soundtrack? Oh, like, think yeah. about, you want to talk about the Locked In Factory. Yeah. Usually I, I clock in at the Locked In Factory and then I play 2K right mm -hmm. after, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, I've spent a lot of hours on that game listening to the soundtrack, and there are oh. certain songs on there that, like, still stick with me to this day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in relation to that, like, what was it like seeing that, that Bluegrass got approved for that? It was, it was really unreal. I mean, E and I are always chasing after, like, yeah, like, I don't know, we, we very see, like, a common goal on, like, where we want to take things. And it was unexpected, to say the least. Like, we were, I don't think we ever thought about that, like, occurring. Right. But when it happened, we are both, like, you know, we both we're both sports backgrounds right so mm -hmm. like we grew up playing 2k i remember back i think it was 2013 2014 i used to sit in my friend's basement and watch him play 2k and we go back and forth and the soundtrack is all, like always stuck in my mind i remember it was uh rick ross and john legend song who do you think we are Ooh. that song yes. that song was one of those yes. that just i was like man like and i wouldn't have known it if it wasn't for 2k 100 percent. so uh it was just unreal to be like, man, like we're a part of this game that we, I mean, it's like, like I said, it was very unexpected, but when it happened, it was like, okay, yeah, like we let, like we're in there. Yeah. Like, you know, I very much was so thankful for it because I don't know, that's not something, the sync placements are something that isn't always like the first thing that comes to mind, right. like we need to, like we need to do this, we need to do that, and especially a placement on something as large as, large, as 2K huge. is. I mean, the amount of love, you know, and feedback I had got just from that alone, like mm -hmm. you know, and I can only imagine what E got from it for sure, you know. And it's like, dude, it's 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 a beautiful thing. It's a yeah. beautiful thing, and being a part of that in general, it's just 
is is big. I had yeah. seen other producers and whatnot who are part of video games. Um, and I'm like, man, like that'd be super, you know, that's cool. How do you even get that? Like, how, yeah. do you know, how does that even come about? Well, 2K had like, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's some sort of like program, right? Or I don't know if program's the right word, but they kind of were like looking out for like. Yeah, new things to, yes. to, to incorporate. And I think they're doing a great job of, of getting new, great music on the soundtracks and also like just putting people on the game kind of thing. Like they, they really put some people on to, to, to E and to yeah. you know, the production of everything. And it, yeah, it, it helped my career, you know, and, and bringing some people to me and, you know, like I said, the spotlight, like yeah. shine the spotlight onto us. And man, I'm just thinking about all the like iconic 2k soundtracks and like all the music that I've yep. discovered from it. Like, even like sure i've like discovered some like hip-hop from it but like 2k13 which i think jay-z did the like yeah, soundtrack yeah. for that one had like roy ayers on it and like yeah. santi gold and like all these people i otherwise would have never, never discovered yeah. so i can only imagine that that has happened yeah for for people playing the game and hearing bluegrass too yeah. so and even like with friends and family it was kind of like whoa whoa like you know, oh my gosh, like you guys are on, you know, oh, and so, okay. You like that that's 2K? a validating thing for like I'm sure for like family members or people who don't really understand they're like, Oh, you still doing that little music thing? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like yeah. and to be like, Look, I'm on a fucking video game, yeah. like that's gotta be validating. It did. It it was like I don't know, I like I got a buddy who uh he's a big gamer and he don't really listen to music too much. Yeah. But he's a big two K guy. And I was with him when I got the call from E, like, yo. We're on there, and uh, I remember hanging up the phone, and you know he's like, "What's what's going on?" You know, and I told him, and I have told him about the other accolades that have come about, mm. but with, with the two K thing, it was like, you know, the, oh what, like you know, and he that got clicks. yeah, that he got clicks. mad excited for me, and so I felt like okay, like this is one of those moments where you know if you don't, it's hard to grasp sometimes the accolades that do occur along mm. this journey of like you know the music shit, and. Uh, I don't want to say music shit because that sounds like I'm like degrading like yeah you know, yeah but yeah. like the musical journey and right. growing as you know uh, an artist and producer mm -hmm. that is something that I think people who are outside of the business can look at and be like oh I can like I can I can understand like I can see or I could um, grasp necessarily this is important this yes is, you know exactly so, yeah. No, that's that's rad, man. I love to see that. Two K, man. So and I, shout out, hey, man. I actually gave up two K. Uh, like <laughs> it, it started, it started like it started like messing with my spirit. <laughs> brother, I haven't played two K in a minute, bro. Brother, you're like, sober from two K. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I'm road, getting my chip later today. <laughs> to Not the last time I played two K, I was on an airplane. Uh, and just like I had my switch and I was getting bored of whatever I was playing. Yeah. And I just picked like the fucking dream team versus like the Charlotte Hornets and just oh. fucking yeah, run it like up. one by run 80. And I was like, this makes me feel good. Yeah. I like this. I like no, this. the worst yeah. feeling ever is losing in one of those games to a bot. Cause oh, like, bro. If you, you feel like so out of out of control. Oh, I fuck, mean, I'll snap my Nintendo Switch right over right my hat. fucking knee, man. Oh, really though. It's so like, let's talk a little bit. Like I said, we. You were on episode eight of the podcast. This yes, is sir, episode sir. 90 something. I don't even remember what number it is at this point, but you were so early on. It's been three years and there's a few things that when I went back and listened to it that I wanted to kind of check back in with you. I wanted to circle back a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite things that you said in that interview was something along the lines of like, when you get that bigger placement with an artist, become friends with them. When they drop something, text them, let them know it's dope, mm -hmm. happy holidays, the yep. whole thing. Mm -hmm. Do you still exercise that philosophy and what has come from being friendly with the people you collaborate with? Oh man, I, that's still, it's funny. I think it's even more important now. I mean, my communication is, I'll be honest, my communication texting wise <laughs> is very on and off because I try to, I mean, we all go through it, you know, the phone lock going, you know, yeah. just looking at the hourly usage and stuff. And I'm like, you know, I, I've been trying in the past year to really do uh, better on like just how much time I'm spending on my phone. Yeah. But the relationships is everything. And like, you know, if I'm going to text somebody and I'm going to, it's, it's usually like an important whatever, you know, it's like, a, there's a reason there's a meaning for like trying to, you know, for, for reaching out. Yeah. 
And but the relationships with the artists, like that's that's everything. Me and E, like I think that's really why me and him have you know been continuing to you know work together. Because if if you know one of us didn't really care, you know, like I care about his well being, he cares about mine. Yeah. And you, you know, all would have a different collaborating relationship yeah. if you know if you all were just like business partners right. basically you know but and like you all are genuine friends who like fuck yeah, with each other yeah. too i mean at first it did kind of start like that like we were just kind of like you know uh you know while i used to leave the soul serum house when he was coming in and i'm mm -hmm. like you know i just cooked up some beats for you you know he's like you know and i remember tanner and john you know y'all be like send you know send e a pack and that's you know when the relationship ended up like kind of developing was because like yeah yeah all right so i sent him a pack and then you know, it's just strictly business for a little while. You know, I'll send beats here, I'll send beats, you know, mm -hmm. whenever, you know, whatever. And uh, then I think, I don't even know when it really changed, but, like, that's the, he's the brother, like, for life, you know, like, we've, mm -hmm. we've traveled to so many different cities together, and yeah. it's just, like, inevitable that the, the friendship became, like, a thing, and uh, became, like, just, I don't know, like, we're, like they said, like, we're brothers for yeah. life because of all this stuff. And I think music is a great way to... If you if you have music with somebody else, I feel like that is like I don't want to say like a I don't know it's a connection. It it's is a, a connection it is like a deeper than average connection. Yeah. I would say like if me and you are both like uh you know Cincinnati Bengals fans, yeah. like we got a connection, yeah, got but a connection. like you know so is a hundred thousand other people, you right. know. But like right. if me and you make a song, a piece of art together, yeah. like you yeah. definitely know that person on a more personal level than. Yeah other people so I, i'm also going to listen to the song a little bit differently than yeah. the average person who's just like you know with the outside ear so you know i listen to ease music and you know it, i i feel like i hear it like since it's on my work mm -hmm. i analyze it a little bit this way a little bit that yeah. way and i mean we'd be we'd be chopping it up all the time and like we we had a phone call not too long ago um I don't even know, maybe a week or two ago, and it's just like we was just checking on each other's like mindset, how you doing, what's going on, yeah. you know, X, Y, and Z. And I still do that with other artists as yeah. well. Like, I mean, shit, e, it's, it's it's amazing, and I think it's a miracle that we both live relatively close to each other, For we're sure. able to like really see each other. Because there's a lot of artists I work with who I don't, you don't get to see, get to see necessarily. Um, but reaching out and being having that personal connection with an artist is so important. I mean, I reached out to Twat on the holidays and was just like, yo, happy yeah. holidays, you know. And he reached back out and was like, yo, like, happy holidays to you, man. Like, you know, it's time, 2024 I mean, is the year, da 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 da. That and shit like, definitely, like, does something for somebody. Cause I even had, like, one of my coworkers who I would consider, like, I'm friends with, but, like, you know, their coworker or whatever. Yeah. Like, he texted me, Merry Christmas. And I was like, oh. That's so real. That's, that's so you real. You know what? Yeah. That guy was thinking of me and yeah. I fuck with him. Like, yeah. I'm a, you know, like, so I understand. It, it, it made the bond saying. tighter. It yes. made the bond yes. tighter. So Definitely. I, I, I love that because when people reach out to me and they tell me, it's like, yeah, like you said, it's like, okay, they, oh, they were caring. They, they were care. thinking about they me. They care. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's important. That's, I feel like a lot of the artists that I still work, that's why I work with Gucci and mm -hmm. Twat and E and, you know, like those are the, those are my, those are the boys. Like, yeah, that's, it's because we check on each other and we talk right. to each other and we, you know, music related or not, like just trying to keep that connection because we both believe in each other. And we both value each other's opinions, you know, value the, the, the health of one another, like, mm -hmm. you know up here and ice so. jj fish ain't reaching back out though <laughs> nah nah I, you know ice jj fish he ended up uh i don't even know what i think he's, he's uber to. driving right now bro <laughs> last time i saw on twitter his motherfucker, somebody was like hell no nah, ice jj fish is picking me up <laughs> yeah oh, I, I had reached out to him i want to say at like a couple months after i mean i was so young when that song ended up dropping yeah because it was like low-key prime Ice JJ Fish, you know, it was like he dropped uh, that one song, you know, there's there's some, on the floor, yeah, yeah. It was that song, and then he had a follow up with it, with something, yes, and I, it was like my song, and you know, people were like, you know, oh, the beat, da, 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 da. and like I got, I got some love from that, but yeah, I don't know, I had, haven't really had a real connection with him because I think the way that I got that placement with him was there used to be this website called like Sendbeats Two dot com or something like that oh, jesus yeah i don't even think it's a thing anymore but artists would go on to this site and this is kind of even pre like 
I don't want to say pre tight beat days, right? But it was kind of pe- pre tight beat days. Yes. And he had, you know, submitted something like "I Stranger Fishers Looking for Beats," you know, or whatever. And there was like a bunch of other artists on there, and I was like, I was like, I know that name. Like, so I clicked on it, sent a bunch of you know R and B beats, and you know, ended up getting one with him. But that's hilarious. I, like that's I said, I don't even man. think that site's around anymore. I don't think that was probably the funniest thing about rewatching our interview is that I forgot that that was a fact. And I reacted in that moment. Exactly how I'm <laughs> reacting now. I'm like, no fucking way. Yeah. It's a cool, right. the great accolade to have. Cause I don't even think he has that much music. Else, no, no, you know? definitely doesn't. Yeah. Um, okay. Another thing that you said on the podcast uh, is that you were manifesting working with DJ High Tech? Um, oh, wh- where are we at with that? And do you, Yo. do you want to manifest working with anybody else while you're here? Yeah, right, because it happens. It happens. I manifest every single one that I've man- I've thought about and spoke on it. Yeah, it's happened. I mean, um, you got a good track record I so far. Oh, it's gonna that. keep going. Uh, man. So the first answer, the DJ High Tech thing. Uh, the relationship with Tech. Shout out Tech. He is such, he's the man. Yeah. He is the legend. Yep. And, you know, Cincinnati is in full support of that, of, of high tech. He's, For sure. He's, he's that guy. Um, but I actually spoke with him, I want to say, towards the end of the summer, kind of in the fall of last year, 2023. We spoke on the phone. He was just checking in with me, trying to see how I was doing and what, um, what my next moves were. Mm -hmm. I think he was looking out for me because of like, you know, publishing deals and whatnot. That's a big thing that's kind of like happening right now is there's a lot of people who are trying to, you know, hey, hey, come on, come on this way and like, you know, get with us, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z. And he was just kind of looking out for me because he's been through all the the loops and hoops of the producer side of things. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't have a producer mentor that has been through a lot of the things that I've been through or even has that sort of like not a lot of options from our area you know what I mean like there's not and you know I can hit up you know a producer who's my age you know who's been through it but it's also so different like all of our stories are so different and so high tech's been through like eras of this shit too you know and so talking to him I mean we was on the phone for like an hour roughly just chatting about like what I should be looking for, what I should, should not do. And yeah, he's so real. Like he's so real and he's so tapped in. And I feel like he's like that where he's just, he's, he, the eyes are always, always watching. He's always yeah. looking. And that's, I love that about him because it, it's so real. And he's not just, you know, you know, da dipped out the city or what, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. He's still very much involved and he's got his eyes on things. And the connection with him happened with the, uh, his daughter had hopped on one of my beats and he hit you know and that's like damn yeah i don't even know and if he that was like happened. he was like damn who produced this yeah, what and the i don't fuck? i don't know if that had happened before the podcast that it might have like i, think- I don't know well i know that like at the, it's like the very last part of the podcast. You're like, I'm manifesting this. I want to work with yeah. DJ High Tech, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, that was like late 2020 yeah. is when that happened. See, I, I'm trying to, I don't know for certain if, uh, that was something that happened before after where like me and him ended up developing a connection Mm -hmm. but but it's there now it's it's there i've sent him a lot of music he's complimented on you know does he give you constructive criticism too or like so is he like "Mm, your your snare in eq right right here you know he's a he's a vibe oriented dude so it's very much if the vibe is there there's not too much to like right. comment on, if anything at all. I've never had him give me like constructive criticism on like an exact beat. Yeah. But he'll tell me like, yo, this, you know, the pack you just sent, beautiful. Love it. Like, you know, send more like that. And I don't know necessarily too much about what he plans on doing with some of these. I know that I'm kind of like, I don't want to say sideline waiting, you know, or not sideline waiting, but like, you know, I'm. You're, on the roster you're way, you're right? ready for coach like to call your number yeah and I, I think that's really what it's about so yeah. um and i'm i'm cool with being on the roster like waiting you know whatever i know that the opportunity is going to happen when it happens organically a lot of things in life i feel like that have happened for me have, have been in that situation of me being on the sideline 
And like, as soon as coach calls my yeah. number, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm there. I'm in there. You got to be ready. You got to be prepared. Yeah, absolutely. At all times. Yeah. Stay ready. So you don't got to get ready. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's what it is with Twat. That's what it is with E. That's what it is with Gucci. Like, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm always waiting. I'm always ready. Yeah. You know, got the phone on at all times. Yeah. Not always fully charged, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, you know yeah. So I, I'm always ready. Always ready for the, the, the call. Per yeah. Se. So last thing I want to ask you here, I, I, this is, so I, I really loved what you said in the first podcast about, uh, you know, being friends with people, you get this bigger placement and you manifest stuff from DJ high tech. But one of the most interesting aspects of that is Tanner, uh, asked you, um, about what route of producer you see yourself taking mm. producer, super group playing it, just straight producer doing a artist producer combo route which is kind of what is what you said. You were like, you know, the the Pierre Bourne route. Which, yeah. by the way, I had a terrible Pierre Bourne take on that episode. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know, I like some of the Pierre Bourne stuff, but some of it sounds the same. Blah blah blah. Hey, hey, I, that was a bad <laughs> take. I will, I will take the That's L so on real. that That's so because real. now when I listen to T Lop Four, T, I love T Lop Five. Now when I listen to T Lop Four, I'm like. Damn, I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I was wrong about this like that. shit. If you like that, I but don't know. how has your view or perception of that changed in the last three years? You know, because to me, it doesn't seem like you've gone full like artist producer combo. Like you know, it seems like you've been more it's, on the production. I'm gonna side. be honest with you, it's happening. It's, it's happening. It's happening. Okay, it's 100 gonna happen. I'd feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice to not release the music that I've been working on working on over the past because i've been recording my own stuff for the, since 2017 yeah you know i try to record as, as many songs as i can trying to you know balance that time it's not top priority but it's 100 percent gonna happen that's the thing is i want to go into the artist the artist production route kind of thing kind of like some pierre born mm -hmm. but when I, I i think i mentioned this the last time and i'm still stuck on it the quincy jones route Mm. I think mm. that's really what I want to do. I want to, I want to. You want to conduct? My, yes, I want to conduct. I want to have you know my hand in every ounce of every project, yes. any song. I want to have that ear, that that influence where people. And this is like really what I I have been working towards, and I think I've gotten there, but on a, you know like a smaller scale. But being able to have that that like, hey, listen, like, tr hear me out. This is what I think we should do. You know, and you know go whichever route works best with the artists. I feel mm -hmm. like going back to the relationship, Quincy Jones had a good relationship with a lot of the artists that he was working with. And it wasn't just like, oh, Quincy Jones popped in the room and he did this and that. It was like, Quincy Jones is, is you know, he that's Uncle Quincy or whatever, yeah, you know, it's like kind yeah. of thing. And so as I think I get, you know, progress and whatnot, that's what I'd like to do. Because Quincy also released his own music. Mm -hmm. You know, Quincy has a lot of good hits. And he's, I was about to say, Quincy, Quincy some has some of those songs that you have heard a lot in your life, yeah. but you just didn't know, didn't it, was know it was Quincy Jones. Exactly. So, yeah. And I had to do some research, you know, growing up, because I'm like, I knew a Quincy because I'm a big Michael fan. Yep. And once I seen like, oh, Quincy wrote this, or Quincy, oh, he sang on this, or he, mm -hmm. you know, and then I seen he had projects and what not and it's such a beautiful era gosh yeah. man talk about yeah. a talented motherfucker man oh man. that guy can just yeah he can conduct he can play he can yep. sing like it's it's all yeah. like a true super producer Quincy like Quin Jones. Quincy was a workhorse and then you know he ended up having this big family and they all went on to do great things shout out Rashida shout Jones out man Rashida, shout bro. Out. Parks and Rec yeah man. For oh real. my gosh oh. like Loki, Loki, one of my first celebrity crushes. I can't even lie, man. I was watching Parks and Rec in high school. Just yeah. like, damn, wow. <laughs> yeah. who is? This yeah, no. Right and then you find out that it's Quincy Jones' daughter. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. They did like I think it was like GQ did an article about Quincy Jones like a few years ago, where they basically got like a quote from all these people that he's worked with, and it's just all amazing things yeah. about Quincy Jones. I mean, so. he, he's a, he's a good guy. He's a workhorse. That's yes. the thing, and that's why I do relate to Quincy is because it's kind of like the things that he had to sacrifice per se are very relatable. Mm -hmm. You know, he sacrificed a lot of, you know, family time, For a lot sure. of, uh, you know, friendships that, you know, were not necessarily music related. You yeah. Know. Um, and uh, yeah. coming up in that era as a black man too, like that oh, era yeah. of music, like, you know, like I would say things are like starting to shift in the like yep. late seventies, mid eighties, but like, 
he, but he's like such an OG. He had to 100%. fight for a lot of that 100%. to get to where he was. I mean, he was one of the first, like, in from my knowledge and understanding, one of the first to like kind of kick down the door mm-hmm. and be not just the artist under the man, but the, he's the man. The man. You know, it's like yeah. everyone's looking for him to for direction instead of just being like a pawn, you know, getting moved around. So, yeah, yeah I, I think he really kicked down the door and. You know, to, to circle back, I really think that that's where I see my, my career heading because I do want to, you know, one, release my own music. I think that's, like I said, be doing myself a disservice not to. That's exciting, though, because when I, when I watched that interview and you said that, I'm like, man, I feel like... Did I say I, Quincy back then? You did. You did. Oh, and, right. hey, I had a bad take about Pierre Bourne, but I'm going to stick with my other great take. No. Off the Wall. Yeah. Oh, best great. Michael Jackson album. See, I like that album, but I still... And I'm, this isn't me trying to be different but like the invincible album is up there for me and it, yeah and it's, then also but thriller though i think thriller just has so many hits that are so undeniable yeah it's like it's like people saying like lebron james is your favorite basketball player like people is, might think no, it's a it, basic answer but it's because he's the fucking yeah best. but it's because it's he's like, the best exactly and i like it's just back to back to back hits on that album that is so fuck that is yeah. so true like because I'll go back and listen to Off the Wall. That was like one of my like childhood albums. Like my mom would play that in the car all the time. So I think I have that like nostalgia connection yeah. to it. Yeah. When I go back and look at Michael's discography, like you're right, Thriller is like ten songs or nine songs or whatever, and like all of them are like bigger than everybody else's biggest song See, type I don't, shit. Yeah, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I thought I read something somewhere. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, internet like. They had apparently recorded hundreds of songs for Thriller. That's crazy. Hundreds of songs for Thriller, and I think the cut was only... Let's see, I'm looking it up right now. How many songs? Nine songs. Nine songs, yeah. Okay, uh, that was my my gut. (sighs) These are all heaters on here, bro. Holy fuck. They're crazy. Let me just just read off the... Want to be starting something? Baby Be Mine. Mm. The Girl Is Mine. The Girl Is Mine. That's right into Thriller. Don't know if you ever heard of that one. Yeah. Pretty good song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under. <laughs> Beat It, Billie Jean, Human Nature, Pretty Young Thing, The Lady of My Life. <sighs> you want to talk about just uh, uh, no skips. No that skips right there is straight up no skips. How long is this album? It's got to be 42 minutes. Man, that's Dude, beautiful. I, I know a lot. I was about to say 43. Dude. <laughs> I, no, I'm so serious because I was like nine songs, 40 some minutes. Like, I. Yeah. yeah and, it's, and it's the most perfect size album. You in might a way. be right. Like, I mean, I, uh, Off the Wall is definitely personal favorite, but man, Thriller. Well, the early Thriller's Michael, crazy. Like, the, that pre Thriller Michael. He's still he like getting, very disco y. He's, he's back, getting man. heated up a little bit. He's getting, he's, he's, <laughs> he's disassociating from the Jackson 5. Right, right. He's still keeping the, you know. He's, he hit a couple mid-range jumpers, you know what I'm saying? He's about, yeah. he's about to pull up from yeah. the logo he's, real yeah, quick. Yeah, no, exactly, and that's what he did. That's exactly what he did. Because Off the Wall is 79, and then 1982 is Thriller. Mm. God damn, that's crazy. Yeah, the 80, Michael owned the 80s, even a bit into the 90s. I mean, when he teamed up with, with Chris Tucker and stuff, and, you know, they was yeah. doing all sorts of appearances and whatnot, I think Rock My World is, is my favorite Michael song. Mm. That and Heaven Can Wait. Oh Ooh, hey, heaven can wait. That's oh my that. Gosh, that's so R and B esque, and I could tell that he very much wanted to tap into like the. You're right. In that later part of Michael's career, he definitely was like kind of keeping with the times a little. Still doing like, yeah. hey, I'm fucking Michael Jackson. I can do whatever yeah. I want. But like, he was definitely tapping in. What's the uh, the black and white music video with the sister? Scream. Stranger. Oh yeah, is? yeah, that's that's Scream. I thought you were talking about a Stranger in Moscow. Like, oh, he's got a black and white video for that. Too, that uh, sure. yeah, I think Scream's actually maybe more grayscale. But anyway, no, but Scream is a great song. But that I, is like I feel like a version of him being like, all right, times and music are changing. I'm about like, to, I'm about let to me get, do my version. Yeah. of this. I mean, do you see uh, T Pain preview the song <laughs> where it was him, Usher, and Michael? And yes. It was supposed to drop, but I guess the dude who had helped write it had leaked it, and Michael was like, "No, no, 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 that's so fucked up, yeah. man. That's so fucked up." Leakers, to know man. that you would have a song, bro. What a on Scorpion, fucking Drake bought Michael Jackson vocals. Yeah, that was some shit where I was like, "All right, like I know you're rich and you're Drake, but like you went into the Michael Jackson vault and paid." 
I would say no less than seven figures for yeah. Michael, Je- no. Michael Jackson vocals. Like I can only imagine what he paid for that. That's it. And what he had Drake to money. go through to get all that shit. And you for, know, I, I'm pretty sure, and I don't even know if this is like correct or not, but I know when that album first dropped, it was that song was on there for a little while, and then I remember I checked it maybe a couple months later, and I think they might have like tried to go back on it. I think you're right. And it wasn't on there for a while. Yes. You couldn't see it. I think yes. now you can you can listen to it just so, fine. Let's do a double check. Here. But on like Spotify, I remember I couldn't find it. I'm like, did they take this off? Like, did Michael's team, like, did the estate run back on their decision? Because I know Drake didn't like not pay for it. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, definitely, so. definitely. All right, let's see. Is it still on Spotify? Yep. Don't matter to me. Almost half a billion plays. Yeah, that guy Drake, I mean, he's, he's <laughs> good. He's good or whatever. That I mean, I don't know. Me. He got a few songs, I guess. Yeah. No, he's... he's... All right, this is uh this is totally off to- off topic and we'll wrap this up here in a second. Just I'm just going to give you an over under. The song One Dance on Spotify. How many streams do you think it has? Over or under two and a half billion streams? I know it's got a billion. It has to have a billion. It does have I will give you it's yeah, over it's, 1 billion. Okay, okay. Sure. Um One Dance, man. I'm trying to th- think about the summer of 2016. Yeah, think, it has to be over because I know that like, uh, what is that one Wiz song has like, see you again. Oh my gosh, that yeah. has like maybe tens, if not a hundred billion streams. One, one dance has 2.9 billion yeah, with a it. B. I believe billion it. streams the revenue on that song. What a oh fucking guy. Boy. That's got to be one of the only dudes who can really make a living off of streaming. Honestly, like yeah, there's like yeah. a certain like upper echelon of people like oh man like him, Ed Sheeran, Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, like Yo. they could stop all their other businesses. I mean, with Wiz, probably just make money. I honestly, and, I mean, because Wiz, of that, you know. so, I mean, he's also got hits as well. But like you know, see you again. I think that's a song that that pays for families. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's on Spotify. It only has 1.7 billion, but I know that YouTube video has like yeah, over stupid. a billion yeah. views. That's crazy. Damn, I said like tens of billions. That was way off. If you if but, you put them all, yeah, together, all together, definitely does. Yeah. Um, all right, man. That was a, that was a nice little tangent we went on. Is there yeah. anything else you want to say before we before we get out of here? I feel like it's only right I try to manifest one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's manifest. Let's manifest another artist, man. What do you got? So this one is a producer. Okay. Uh, I want to lock in with Cardo. Cardo got wings. I really need. Uh, that's been a that's been an inspiration of mine since like around the icy twat days, uh-huh. 2015, 2016. So I, I would love to lock him with Cardo. He's the stuff he did for Wiz, yep. the stuff he did for Larry, the stuff he's doing for, for Cardi right now. Dude, I was just about I mean, to and, say, and it's funny man. Be, it's funny because I was, a year ago, I was like, I had a feeling, I was like, I need to make some, some Cardo Got Wings kind of dark vibe beats. Mm-hmm. And I checked my YouTube. I definitely got the, the hits. You could check <laughs> it. But it sounds like some shit that Cardi's hopping on now. And I was like, man, like, I, I really have the same, uh, I, 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 the taste that I'm moving towards is where Cardo's like already at yeah. in a way. And so I'd love to try to, you know, get that, that, that connection going. I think he's, seems like I know, a great dude as well, you know. Me so. and you have bonded over like that early Cardo currency whiz oh era for gosh. sure. Rolling I papers. think it's so amazing to like, cause like that in my mind, when I think of Cardo, that's what I think of is that era. Yeah. And then the fact that he's doing these Cardi beats. He was doing Drake songs. He did God's Plan. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, like what? Like like actually legendary. Yeah, that- extremely legendary. He's so versatile. And it's crazy because you can still tell that he had a hand on it without it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's not just some, like, uh, I don't some- know. It's not where it's like. Oh, this obviously is. It's like, wait, oh, oh like I can kind of tell that Who this did, got an yeah. influence of Cardo, and then you look at the 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 credits, and you're like, of course, yeah. it's him. Yeah, it's he, he's the got fucking a guy. Everything. Oh Absolutely shit. Everything. If Cardo got wings, has made it this far in the podcast. Hit up Rocco on Instagram, man. Hit please. him up. <laughs> yeah, please. Um, please. Well, I want to thank everybody who has listened, who has watched this far. I want to thank Rocco again for coming on the pod. Dude, I know, you got your eyes closed. Oh, my, my, hands my, my, my hands out. My hands out. It's an honor. It's a say. fucking honor. I, don't don't leave me hanging on dude, camera. I'm so don't sorry. leave me hanging <laughs> yeah, on <dude>. camera. <laughs> um, if you have made it this far in the podcast, 
like the video, subscribe to the channel, look at the main page, the TV page, Soul Serum Studios, if you need a white wall, a green wall, we got it, it's behind me right now, you just can't see it, um, TikTok, fucking, I don't know, what else, what else, uh, Add me on um, fucking chess.com at Soul Serum. <laughs> That'd actually be crazy if I just got to be a master chess player hey. as at Soul Serum. <laughs> I might have to tap in with that. Um, and with all of that being said, as always, I'm your host, Clay Bonin. Rock Roy. And we'll see y'all next time. Deuces. <laughs>